Every time a new electric car gets released into the New Zealand market, like this Polestar 2 for example, Kiwis typically have four questions. How much does it cost? How far does it go per charge? How many potatoes can you put in it? That's honestly, that's, that's more a me thing. And lastly, what happens when you tow something with it? Doesn't it absolutely destroy the range? Well, the answer to that last question is, I, I truly don't know. I've, I've never towed anything with an electric car, but that's the point of this video. And I have a plan. The plan was to hitch up a caravan in East Auckland and then head south to embark on a typical caravan adventure, spending the night at a holiday park in Miranda, 73 k's away, before heading back over the hills for 40 kilometers to the ChargeNet Hyper Rapid Chargers in the Bombay Hills, all to see how an electric car's range is affected by towing a caravan in New Zealand conditions. But first, I needed a caravan. And this is it. It is a 2002 Luna Arriva GTS. GTS. And what can I tell you about it? Well, not much, because I don't really know much about caravans, other than the fact that it's 3.66 meters long, it weighs 765 kilograms, and its most notable attribute is its shape. It's sort of, well, rectangular. And I remember learning in school that rectangles don't typically have very good aerodynamic -nicism. So. This is going to be really interesting. But before I could hook up this chamber of grandeur, I needed to know exactly how much electricity would be used on the exact same route with no load at all in this dual motor 300 kilowatt Polestar 2. And by the way, I've already reviewed this car, so be sure to check that video out. It's a seriously impressive machine with all the gadgets and performance you could ever want, as well as a very decent PSC. But anyway, back to the test. We have 90% charge right now. And it reckons the car should have 70% charge by the time we get to the holiday park. First things first, I want to clear the trip computer. And then once we've done it with the trailer, we can compare the two and just see what percentage extra power this thing uses to haul a trailer. All right, and we're off. And we've picked a beautiful sunny Auckland day to do this. Isn't it magnificent? This car has loads of options, as you'd expect. It has range assistant, which shows you in big friendly letters on the screen exactly how much electricity you're using at any given time. So it reckons with a 90% charge, we could do up to 410 k's on a charge. Now this will be an interesting car for the test because out of all the cars I've tested, most of them have very, very optimistic guessometers that guess how far you can go per charge, except for this one. This one, the Polestar 2 and the Kona EV, I found those two cars to be fairly accurate when it comes to guessing how far they can go per charge. So this will be the ultimate test. This part's pretty boring to watch and not much happens. So let's make it a time lapse instead, which meant that just a few seconds later, I'd completed the first leg doing 70 Ks before pulling into Miranda Holiday Park to check the energy consumption with no load attached. Here we are, Miranda Holiday Park. Good progress so far. Okay, so I'm gonna go down the driveway to reception, turn around, check out the electricity used, and then go to the next point. The power consumption so far has been pretty normal, 20.2 kilowatt hours per 100k. We've done 72.6 k's. Now we're going to go to the next checkpoint, which is the hyper rapid charges in the Bombay Hills. All right, let's carry on. To save your sanity, I'll time lapse that footage as well, which meant before long I had a total of 112 k's under my belt with no load attached. So now it's time for the pre test total. Total time, 1 hour 41 minutes. Consumption, 21.7 kilowatt hours per 100 k's. Total distance, 112 kilometers. Okay, there we have it. That's our benchmark. That's our test base to go from there. Now, I've got to go get a caravan, strap it on, head down south. And here I am driving a car that is worth more than me, towing a caravan that is, well, admittedly the caravan's also worth more than I am. So I'm kind of nervous. Oh, look at this, a reversing camera is useful. <laughs> okay, let's stop there, and do the rest manually. <laughs> Now something cool is to release the tow hitch in this car, press this button, and then, there we go, it plops out, lock it in, and gosh, I parked pretty perfectly, didn't I? <laughs> That's unexpected. This is a good omen. That handbrake is sort of decorative. Okay, I should be able to just lower this on down. Come on, baby. There we go. Okay, we're getting there. Gosh, I'm making this look far too easy. <laughs> it's a trap. For your information, the Polestar 2 has a 50 millimeter trailer hitch on it, and it uses a round European style trailer plug. And a lot of Kiwi motorhomes have this rectangular one. So you're gonna need an adapter like that. 
Now I'm sure whatever I'm doing now feels right, but I'm sure there's someone on the internet who's gonna tell me you shouldn't have done it that way. That's on. Okay, now we just gotta test the lights and make sure everything works. All right, something cool about the Polestar 2 is that you can connect a trailer and it has an automatic light checking mechanism. It'll ask you, do you wanna perform a trailer lamp check? Yes. And then it'll say, check the lamps. With the caravan's lights all tested fine, I got busy installing a mobile app called a Better Route Planner. And because the Polestar 2 infotainment system runs on its own version of Android, you can install this app straight from Google directly into the car. Now this app is incredibly detailed, but because my brain is fairly smooth, I find it a bit cumbersome to use, and to explain all its features, we'd need a whole separate video. Suffice to say, it's more than just a map or a journey planner, because the Polestar 2 already has one. But with a better route planner, if you pay for the fancy version, which is about 10 bucks a month, you can actually add caravans and trailers and even add extra weight into the app, and as it taps into the car's onboard computer data, it supposedly offers frighteningly accurate range estimates when towing with your EV. Or will it? Well, the only way to find out is to give it a go and compare it to the car's onboard system. But enough talking, it's finally time to begin this zero emission caravan adventure silently. First problem, I've got to sort of navigate out of here. Oh man, going across Pakaranga Highway with a trailer. <laughs> what have I got myself into? You know what, I'm going to turn this way and do a U-turn. At least attempt to do a U-turn in this massive machine. Right, hold on to your hats. That's a jackknife, I think. Yep, all good, all good, all good. Okay. Oh. Far out, stressed out, and I've only got 100 meters. <laughs> Soon enough, there was a space in the traffic, so I eased into Auckland's chaos. I just realized I've got a towing face. <laughs> oh, I can't say I'm relaxed. Whew. Okay. First impression is that it feels like I'm towing something. <laughs> First left feels like I'm towing a caravan. But it's not unwieldy, it's, it's sort of, it's doing what it should. Oh, see, I can feel the braking, oh, clunk, yeah, and I can, you could hear the squealing of the brakes from the caravan, so it's got a combination of the car's regenerative braking as you're slowing, it's putting power back into the battery, but at the same time, the caravan is slowing us down as well. And that's one thing I never thought to check, is do I turn the regenerative braking on or off when towing? I genuinely don't know. But that turned out to be the least of my concerns because as usual I'd missed my turn and was going in the wrong direction. Stay green, stay green, stay green. I missed my turn so now I'm going through the industrial part of Auckland. Just desperately want to get out of here. I am stressing out. Where's the map? Map please, map, map, map. Oh, I've got a map there and a map there. Okay, go around the roundabout. I kind of want to turn the air conditioning on because it's absolutely roasting today. Yesterday it was freezing and I had the heater going. Today it's the polar opposite. Oh good. A roundabout. Busy, busy roundabout. Neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't want to put too much power to the wheels. I know this car can handle it, but I don't want to put 300 kilowatts down the shaft of that uh, caravan. But fortunately, things were about to get worse. I can't see in front of this truck if the traffic... Oh, no, no, no. Don't make me stuck, stuck in the middle of the road. This is my fault. I should have waited. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't see a thing. Can't get any closer. This is my fault. I can't blame anyone else. I should have waited for the intersection to be clear before I pulled across it. Fortunately, the back of the caravan is sort of sticking across the intersection a bit. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, come on, where's the green light? Where's, okay, I need air conditioning. This is, I'm getting stressed out here. I am not a happy little Kiwi right now. Oh, come on, let's go. I just want to get out of Auckland. Oh man, I've got to put this thing and recirculate because that mini is blowing smoke. How is that legal, man? That's disgusting. Hey, cancerous. Man, I'm cranky now, aren't I? How about that? How cranky am I? <sighs> okay, so it turns out towing a caravan in Auckland Central is not good for your mental health. <sighs> I mean, it's taken me 28 minutes to get on the motorway. This is madness. And eventually I made it onto the southern motorway on ramp to finally start my journey south. Okay. Okay, we're almost free. Oh, I can feel the stress melting away already. I don't even want to look at the average uh, electricity usage just yet. I don't want to know. 
<laughs> no point stressing myself out early. If you've just joined us, you've missed a whole lot of stress. I'm now heading south on the motorway. I'm relaxing. We've still got another, I don't know, hour, hour and a half to get to the uh, camping site. Uh, from here on, I'm hoping it's going to be smooth sailing. I got my wish. It turned out to be stress-free as I headed south with this 300 kilowatt all-wheel drive machine making light work of hauling my 765 kilo caravan. Currently going up the Bombay Hills, I have the cruise control set to 80 kilometers an hour. I'm in the left lane, staying out of everyone's way. They can all scoot past. Uh, and let me tell you quickly about the car, the Polestar 2. It has a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is a very decent sized battery pack. Range, maximum range is 480 k's per charge. And as the car slowly learns how you drive, it's one of the cars I've tested with one of the more accurate guessometers that guesses how far you can go per charge. But this towing a trailer is going to throw it for a loop. That'll be interesting to see what the result is. And it's interesting I chose this vehicle because it has 300 kilowatts. It's all wheel drive. And with its 78 kilowatt hour battery pack, and yet only, only 480 Ks per charge, which is still very good. It means that it's obviously not as aerodynamic and as sleek as the Tesla Model 3, but the Tesla Model 3 relies heavily on its aerodynamics to get its long range. Take those away by adding a caravan, and I fear it might suffer more than this. But we'll find out once I check the watt hours per 100 kilometers once we get off the motorway, which is coming up very soon. Okay, I'm off the motorway. I'm just going to pull over here on the hard shoulder and give a quick update of power consumption. You ready? 30.9 kilowatt hours per 100k. That is, that is much lower than I expected so far. Really much lower. I would have thought it would be around 38, 45. So what I'm going to do now is carry on. I'm off the motorway, so my, my speeds should be lower overall, but the hills are going to increase dramatically. Let's see what effect this has. And with an average consumption sitting at 30.9 kilowatt hours per 100k, it was time to tackle the hills in this all-electric Polestar 2. I don't want to put my foot hard down, but this thing does have 300 kilowatts, and it will redecorate the interior of that caravan if I use all of it. What's interesting though is that this one is a dual motor, all wheel drive, 300 kilowatt model. Models that have been sold that have two motors like this, the performance models, for two grand extra, you can now have a software tweak that'll unlock an extra 50 kilowatts. That's bringing it down to under four seconds, zero to 100 time for a two grand upgrade. And all cars made as of next year, 2023, will have that extra 50 kilowatts of standard. So you're getting a 350 kilowatt cruiser. That is not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. Because I remember back in the 90s, if you wanted to put an extra 50 kilowatts of power on your car, it cost you more than two grand, that's for sure. <laughs> As well as an extra 50 kilowatts, the software upgrade also gives owners an extra 20 newton meters of torque. So when compared to the two most popular tow vehicles on New Zealand's roads, the Toyota Hilux and the Holden Colorado, the Polestar 2 appears favorably in terms of hauling power, especially for a family sedan. That is beautiful and it, it makes me wonder, like when I was in Auckland towing this thing, I'm thinking to myself, what's the point? Why do people caravan? It's just an inconvenience. But looking at this, why wouldn't you want to spend a night out in that? I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. And uh, after driving for, what, 25, 30 odd years of my life, being stuck behind numerous caravans, uh, it looks like I'm giving vengeance back to the New Zealand populace because I have about 20 cars stuck behind me right now. <laughs> so yes, vengeance is mine. Uh, no, I'm not going to be like that. I will pull over when there's an opportunity and let people pass. See, what I'm going to do is something that very few Kiwi caravanners do. I'm going to just pull over regularly to let people pass. Like this. See? It's what people should do. See, I'm giving back to the community. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, I know having just said that, there's going to be caravanners riding and saying, uh, actually, I always pull over and let people pass. Well, where were you every time I've ever gone on a road trip? Always got stuck behind caravans. So I'm trying to change the reputation of caravanners, giving back to the community, giving back to the motorist. And with an air of caravany self-righteousness, I went right past my turn as usual. I was daydreaming and I missed the turn. Now I've got to do another two kilometers down the road really want to be wasting electricity right now. Actually, I should turn the air conditioning off. I've been guilty. I've been just enjoying that sweet air conditioning. It's a surprisingly hot day, even though it's June. It's madness. Okay, so I've got to do a U-turn around this roundabout, go back. I've lost a little bit of range, a little bit of time. 
As I turned around and accelerated in the right direction, I almost forgot how powerful this machine is. Oh, no, don't, don't. Almost put my foot down there. Forget that, no, you probably <laughs> pull the, tr uh, the frame out from under the caravan if you unleash all 300 kilowatts. <laughs> grow up, Gavin, grow up. And while driving through some of New Zealand's twistiest, bounciest roads, I discovered something about the Pole Star's sign reading abilities and New Zealand's open road signs. Ah, okay, so the Pole Star 2, interesting fact. Don't know if any journalist ever mentioned it before. The oh, Pole Star 2 oh, can't uh, not read open road signs. Normally every road sign you go past, every speed sign, it'll change the speed sign on the dashboard. 80, 60, 150. But the open road sign, the car is like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so, problem with electric cars is that because they're so quiet, you can hear rattles. And there is a rattle somewhere over there. Is it? It's part of the seat. Is it? Is it my phone? Okay, it's quiet if I hold the seat, but I can't drive like this. <laughs> what if I play some music? No, I can't because I can't have music in the video because YouTube algorithm will grab it and tell me off. Oh boy, I'll just have to suffer in silence. Turns out it was the seatbelt clasp tapping on the side of the seat, but fortunately I didn't have to suffer for long because I was soon pulling in to my destination. Miranda Holiday Park. And I was eager to see if there was any noticeable power consumption difference between the highway and the hills. Just quickly, I can tell. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so 31.8 kilowatt hours, so our, our consumption has actually increased. It looks like if you are driving in New Zealand hills, it will actually use the same, if not a little bit more power with a medium sized caravan than driving on the motorway. If your motorway speed is on average, you know, 80 or so kilometers an hour. Very interesting. Okay, so hills make more of an impact than the motorway speed does. Obviously, it depends on your motorway speed, and I'll look at the impact of different highway speeds on the final leg, as well as working out the totals. But for now, it's time to get my portable home all settled in and connected to power and water, so that I can have a cuppa and give you a tour of the alluring Luna Arriva GTS. Okay, we've got the water and the power set up, I hope. Let me give you a tour. This is the first time I've actually seen it in the daylight. I picked it up late last night. Here we go. Welcome aboard. For just 75 bucks a day, you can also rent this casserole of awesomeness. Check that out. I mean, it's got a sink, it's got a cooker, it's got a heater, it's got a toilet and a little bathroom in here as well. And, oh, and toilet paper that has unraveled itself on the journey. That's pretty cool. Seriously, there's something about having the ability to live like a snail with your house on your back and just travel anywhere. I think my only criticism about this would be that it was built during a time where everything was gas. Early 2000s was still the era of gas cooktops, gas stoves, gas, gas fridges, gas heaters. Uh, and now, you know, 20 years later, technology's raced ahead. We've got electric this, induction that, heat pump that. It's, it's technology's leapt ahead. And even sites like this have not only full power, but electric car charging. That's where we are now. And this is only just the beginning. It's just going to ramp out and ramp up. So the idea of having an electric car with an electric caravan is not just science fiction anymore. It's just, it's very real. It's normal. Yeah, sorry. I was starting to get a bit carried away there. So to calm down, I put the kettle on, put out a delicious bowl of fruit to make it feel like home, and got busy doing emaily worky stuff. Now I should point out that this isn't the first time I've gone on an all-electric holiday, as three years ago I was parked in the exact same spot with a much worse haircut when I reviewed a completely electric motorhome, which had all-electric appliances, and as this site has both caravan and electric car quick charging, I awoke to a full charge ready to continue my journey every morning. So be sure to check out that video review as well. But here in the caravan, the sun was setting and it looks like it was going to be a cold night. The thing is, I don't want to use the gas heater. It has a heater in here, but um, given what we know about climate change, I can't really bring myself to use gas appliances anymore. So I might just have to bundle up tight. <laughs> could be interesting. So I got busy closing things up and planning for dinner, and this is an area in which a caravan towed by a car beats a motorhome. One of the best things about caravanning is that you can disconnect the car at any time, disconnect the camper, and then you've got a machine which will take you out where you want to go, and I am going to go get some fish and chips. As I settled into my unhealthy dinner, let's take a quick look at tow bars and electric cars. Now some of the EVs I've reviewed come with tow bars as standard like these ones, but many others in New Zealand do not. So how hard is it to install a tow bar on your EV? Mark, how hard is it to install a tow bar on a Tesla Model 3? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> when you know how. Now, how many of these have you done? This is number 136 for Model 3s. Got a few others, Leafs and Ionic 5s and 
so MGs and people people put them on lifts, huh? Yeah. Can you tow a lot with a lift? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot. You can. People do. <laughs> people do. Mostly for bike racks, but people do definitely tow stuff. First of all, how long does it take typically to install a tow bar in a Model 3? About two to two and a half hours. Is that the same for uh, most EVs? Yeah. Without doing any shortcuts, it's that sort of length of time. What is a, a typical install between, say, a Leaf or a Kona or a Tesla Model 3? What does it set uh, the buyer back? For the Model 3, for example, this vehicle, I have four different tow bars. The average is actually probably about twelve hundred dollars, something like that. Yeah. And around that sort of money for most cars, actually for a, for a decent removable bar, you'll spend about that sort of money. What's the the weight rating that it can handle? So this car is rated as a thousand kgs, um, which is interesting because the Model Y, which we'll get soon, hopefully, is rated at sixteen hundred, and it is the same chassis. So that's where I get my main power feed. This is a true ignition. It comes on when I put my foot on the brake. What does installing a tow bar do for the Tesla warranty? Uh, nothing as long as it doesn't affect anything. So if there's a problem with the vehicle and they deem it to be because of the wiring added to the vehicle, then they will not fix that particular part under warranty. And it's all coming together. So this is the uh, the mule, the test trailer. And just like that, the tow bar was installed and tested. But before I conclude this towing test, let me do a quick shout out to Ecotricity, which makes these videos possible. It's our country's only carbon zero certified electricity provider. So if you're anything like me and you want to give your kids and grandkids a clean future to enjoy, then head to ecotricity.co.nz. Ecotricity's power is 100% renewable and prices are competitive too. So you can afford to tow your caravan or trailer right past the petrol stations with clean, cheap electricity. And while you're there, check out the EV Buyer's Guide, where you'll find the ranges and prices of every electric vehicle on sale in New Zealand today, including this one, the Polestar 2. But now it's time to wrap up this test and I was bursting with energy after a great night's sleep. So this leg is going to be going to the hyper rapid charges in the Bombay Hills. And then we can figure out the total energy consumption and give you a percentage of how much an average size trailer like this actually consumes. This should be really interesting. The other problem I've got when I get to the charger is how do I charge with a trailer attached? I honestly don't know and I'm kind of nervous about that. So yeah, let's see what happens. Let's hit the road. Well, I've got to remember not to use that 300 kilowatts. <laughs> it's just so tempting, it's there. <laughs> this last leg of the journey was almost 40 k's away back over the hills, so I put the destination into both the car's gasometer and a better route planner to see which one would be the winner. So we're going to go to the Z station where the ChargeNet Hyper Rapid Chargers are. So it reckons we're going to get there with 36%. It looks like it's learning how much power we're using. All right, now this is saying that we will have 28% charge. Now, I'm tending to believe a better route planner more than the car because a better route planner knows that I've put, I've got 700 kilos behind me. Now, I just want to point out that if you're watching this video, from your perspective, it's probably a 20 or so minute zany entertaining video, but from my perspective, it's taken me two weeks of begging and pleading and Facebook groups, appeals and phone calls and going in person, disappointment, etc., and then three days of editing in order to throw this together. So please, I beg you, Please share this video, like it, upvote it, retweet it, do whatever you've got to do. More than any other video I've ever churned out. Because if this doesn't do well, I'm going to have to go back to OnlyFans, really. And I know what I've got. I've got at least 68 cents worth here. So yeah. Though I didn't take inflation into account, so I'll probably still need your help. In the meantime, the Polestar 2 made light work of the 40k journey over the hills, and before long, I was arriving to recharge at the two ChargeNet Hyper Rapid Chargers south of Auckland, which can charge six cars at once, up to 300 kilowatts. 
The only problem was whether I could recharge while towing a caravan. Well, that and the rain clouds overhead. Okay, how are the charges looking? Hopefully empty so I can park across all of them. Oh, they're busy. <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay, have an idea. Okay. My idea was to unhook the caravan in an empty part of the car park, then drive over to the charger before it hosed down. So I got busy unhooking it again, though admittedly I was starting to get good at it at this stage. Then I drove across to the charger and backed up nice and close so I wouldn't get soaked, only to realise something. The key fob to turn on the charger is in my bag in the boot. <laughs> you want these seats go back all the way? That's fantastic. I could have just slept in here. Yes! <laughs> Charge that key fob. <laughs> all right, I put my shoes on and battle the elements. Before I go and do this, I want to go and check just how much the consumption has been. 42.4 kilowatt hours per 100k. And it's taken 45 minutes, average speed 56 k's an hour. So we've used a lot more electricity going over hills than we did on the motorway. That is interesting. Let's look at predictions now. When we left the Google Map system built into this Android Auto Polestar 2, said that we'd have 32% charge remaining. A better route planner said that we would have 28. The reality has been a little bit different. We now have 26%. So a better route planner was close, but both were wrong. All in all, the car system did a good job, but a better route planner did better. Now I'm gonna go charge it up now that the rain has subsided just a little bit, and I'm gonna take a camera with me, and I just don't wanna get wet because this is waterproof, but I'm not. Choose the CCS, 300 kilowatts. I mean, <laughs> you can't beat that. Now it's gonna flash and show me which one to take. That one. And now, yuck. Okay, now plug it in. And now I'm going to go back and hide and the car does the rest. The Polestar 2 recharges at a peak rate of 150 kilowatts, meaning around 510 kilometers per hour. Okay, so the car is chomping down on some electricity right now. And rather than just sit in here and stare at a fogged up window, I have a caravan on the other side of this parking lot. I can go in there and chill out, lie down, read a book. <laughs> I just have to get a bit wet. There's my camper over there. All right, now the car is charging, I can do a little bit of quick and dirty maths. What I'm going to do is take that run from yesterday down to the holiday park, take out the run to the fish and chip shop last night, and add in this run and find the average, and then we can compare it to yesterday when I made the run without any load on the car whatsoever. And let's see what the verdict is. How much power did it use? Place your bets. The official maximum range for the Polestar 2 is 480 k's per charge. Considering it has a 78 kilowatt hour battery, of which 75 kilowatt hours is usable, to get that 480 k's per charge, you'd need to sip away at just 15.6 kilowatt hours or units of electricity per 100 k. In the dry run I did without a caravan, coupled with my enthusiastic driving style, I averaged a fairly high 21.7 kilowatt hours per 100 k. And if I drove like that non-stop, a full charge would give me a real-world Gavin range of 346 k's. And adding a trailer on the same route is where it gets interesting and speed plays a part. On the motorway leg, my consumption at 80 k's an hour was only 27 kilowatt hours per 100 k. Those conditions would give me 278 k's per charge with the Polestar 2 while towing. Not bad at all. At 85 k's an hour, however, it was 33.1 units of electricity per 100 k, meaning you'd get 227 k's per charge while towing a caravan with the Polestar 2. But at 90 k's an hour, there was a big difference, doubling my test run consumption, averaging 42 kilowatt hours per 100 k. That means at that speed, you'd only get 179 k's out of a charge. And it gets more interesting. On the highway alone, I averaged 30.9 kilowatt hours, but in the hills, I averaged 42.4 kilowatt hours per 100 k, which means the hills consumed 37% more electricity than cruising at 80 k's an hour on the motorway. So what's the takeaway from all this? Well, towing with a newer, longer range electric car is very doable. And if you keep your speed in check in a Polestar 2, you could tow a Luna Arriva GTS from Auckland to Taupo on one charge, or Christchurch to Kaikoura on two thirds of a charge. And don't forget, a full charge in a Polestar 2 is about 16 bucks, which is a little bit cheaper than a tank of gas these days. And that answers the question, 
question. Can you use an electric car to tow a caravan and go on a caravan holiday? In the case of the Polestar 2, absolutely. Not only does it have a really decent amount of range, but caravan sites now, all the decent ones, all have power anyway. So you can not only power your caravan, but recharge your car. And the next morning, boom, off you go again. So I had a lot of fun, and I think I'd like to do it again. But next time, maybe with a few more challenges.